Live from the Talking Joe Studios. It's Talking Joe. Talking Joe is on the air. Hey, 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 it's me, Mark, and welcome to Talking Joe. Today we are going to be talking with artist Chris Lai. What a treat. Based in Indonesia, Chris is a concept artist and founder of Caravan Studio, designing movie visuals for projects such as Shazam, Fury of the Gods, and working with the likes of Netflix, Prime, Disney+, Plus, Warner Brothers, Skydance. But more importantly, before he got into all of that, he was an intern at Devil's Due and an artist on Arashikage Showdown, Sigma 6 Comics, and more so he's going to join us today to talk all about it <laughs> and here he is hi chris hi hi mark how are you i'm good how are you thanks so much for for joining us um hi, so so where are you for a change i'm not talking to an american over there in that direction america <laughs> where are you today i am good i i I'm in, in Jakarta, Indonesia right now. So it's like, it is, yeah. The hours and, is and quite, you're get, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going the extra mile because it's, as we record, it's midnight in Jakarta uh, while I'm, I'm living the life of luxury here with a, a very leisurely 6 p.m. So uh, <laughs> thank you for joining us at this late hour for you. No, no problem. Um, Tell, tell us about what's behind you, maybe that uh, uh, have you have you specially reorganized your your room so that you, you're showing off some of the GI Joe stuff behind you, or does it normally yeah, look yeah. like that? I, I when I when you contacted me, so I tried to dig uh, some of the stuff that I I did uh, for GI Joe. So I actually I had. I have a lot of uh, Sigma Six toys basically in the in the office. Huh? So I brought home some. <laughs> And then I also work on the illustrations for the uh, GI Joe 25th anniversary packaging. Oh wow! I didn't it realize that. That was uh, it looks like the old uh, artworks, but it's it's new actually. So at the time I had an uh, assignment from Hasbro to actually redraw them, uh -huh. and uh, a, a a painter, a, a digital painter, uh, actually color it to look like an old uh, gouache artwork for, for the packaging and that's for the 25th anniversary. So basically that's I amazing. a little bit yeah, of the artworks. So you've got, you've got, I guess, Zartan behind you. I think that's a brand new illustration that, that didn't exist oh, yeah, before. Yeah, yes, yes. And, and, and there uh, were, this, and some of like the others the were one. like recreations. The, the snake yeah. Ones, this so. is, <laughs> oh, and this, this is course Tom oh wow <laughs> okay so those those were like uh that, that that was you that was your pencils trying to to follow the 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 originals and then it was digit digitally colored to try and look as much like the the original packages as possible yes 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 very cool how, how many of those do you think you did mm, i think probably um 40 or 50 something i mean oh like, that's I, I mean, a lot first several budgets yeah it, uh, i i did uh, most of them i think almost all of them yeah yeah that's incredible <laughs> <laughs> and we were talking just before we started um recording that uh you you hold on to a lot of your art so is is do those, do those still exist that they were they done as original pencils before being scanned off to be colored uh yes so i still have all the Origi original pages for the Ara Chikage Showdown, uh, GIG Sigma 6, and all the illustrations for the packaging for the Sigma 6, and also the cover for the GIG 25th anniversary as well. But that one is a huge, so uh, I think this one. Yeah, this one. <laughs> Yeah, let's get into that. Let's get into that in a, in a minute. But um, be, before we before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's talk about little Chris when you were growing up in Indonesia. Um, 
so so what was what was that that like and what was the route to to get into comics and and actually before we get too too far ahead in your career trajectory did did gi joe make its way over to to your country in uh as toys and comics and and cartoons did did you get to see any gi joe when you were little mm, uh, when, when i was little there was only one uh, national tv channel in indonesia only one so it's the got from the government so there's only one car like tv series uh every five o'clock <laughs> so let's say monday is let's say he man then uh, <laughs> uh tuesday is scooby-doo something like that and it's uh, repeating like uh mm -hmm. but at that time i as far as i aired in in my country at that time when i was little so actually i knew gi joe later on uh from the toys actually when i was mm -hmm. in college so it's like uh when i was started to uh uh be exposed to american comic so american comic w wasn't really um uh, easy to get in indonesia as well at that time uh uh look the local public publishers are translated and localized uh let's say conan and some of the superman uh comics but is and spider-man mm -hmm. on on the newspaper that's that's all i think that's all the american comics that we could get at the time so, so when i went to college then my friend introduced me to this a this is the comic store so what is comic store so we enter it and it's an american comic store uh in basically the imported uh american comics uh uh in, in indonesia so uh, uh, so this is when you've had a chance to to move to a bigger city. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. I, I moved to a bigger city to the near the capital. So, uh, uh, so there was that comic in American comic store there. So at that time, I think that probably there's only two in Indonesia, the whole country. <laughs> right. And and what was the local comic scene? Was was did you was there much in the way of local comics and and community and, and things being created, um, in, in Indonesian by Indonesian artists and creators? I mean, do, do you mean right now or back then? No, no, back then, yeah. Um. Uh, when I grew up ar around uh, eighty or nineties, uh, at that time the local comic scene was kind of like in declining stage uh it was uh it reached the 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 golden age around the 70s uh but then it's kind of declining uh so at that time i'm more exposed on european comics actually like tintin uh trigun storm uh from from belgium uh french something like that because they they translated more from European at that time. Uh, and mm. then after that, uh, from Japan and from US. So it's, it's kind of uh, like that. Yeah. And, and did you, did you always draw? Um, was, was there a point uh, in your, or in your brain that you made uh, the connection that, that comics were made by people and, and maybe that's, uh, something that that you might be able to do yourself. Uh, uh, when when my, my uncles uh give me Tintin Tintin comics, I I I love it so much. Uh, so I I started to make my own comics when I was like, uh, I think fourteen years old. I started to make my own comic books. But uh -huh. it's based on the TV series uh, that I I watch uh, on TV basically. So it was I think the 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 series was Centurion Centurion from from US. <laughs> okay. It's the the one that is man and, and there's a kind of uh, a vehicle a robot. It can be a a motorcycle, a car, something like that, a, a helicopter, something like that. So I love that show so a lot. So I. Try to make the comic adaptation of that show, 
and I I put make it into a book, uh, and then I let my friend to read it basically around. I mean, like like one person read it next to the uh, the next person, and then I make the next series, something like that. That's where how I started to make comic. <laughs> right, excellent. <laughs> and uh, and so so how did you how do you then pro progress with like your uh, art career and your your studies? You went on to. I might be skipping a stage, but you went on to study architecture. Is that that right? Uh, yes. So, um, of course, uh, art at that time, art and comic books, uh, was in a a good career choices. I mean, especially among parents. So mm -hmm. yeah. when I, <laughs> when I graduated from my high school. Uh, I wanted to move to bigger cities, basically, to study in a bigger city. So uh, I tried to apply for a fine art uh, school. But at that time, my parents said, please don't uh, uh, try something else. So because I love to draw, so I mm -hmm. applied for architecture. I applied for uh, to three schools. All of them, I choose architecture. So in the end, I got accepted in both uh, the three schools. I entered one of the government, uh, government university, basically, uh, because at that time is like the most kind of the most prestigious university in Indonesia, and also the most difficult to enter, and also the cheapest <laughs> in the most tuition. So it's it's a good choice. So I went there. I studied architecture for four years. Um, hmm. so, but, uh, when I study architecture, I met some friends who actually influenced me more to, to comic. So basically at that time I was kind that of influence. like, about comic. Yeah. <laughs> but then my friends are like, come on, let's, can you draw comics and let's make comics. And so that's uh -huh. how I st started to draw comics during my college. And then when I graduated, I worked as an architect uh, in Indonesia for two years. But during the nighttime, I make my own comic books with my friends and then we self-publish it. So like basically uh -huh. like printing in, printing or maybe like basically photocopy, uh, comic cop, photocopy, comic, like, like, like a zine, something like that. Indie comics mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah. How many sorts? How many copies do you think you made? Uh, at first we tried to make like about 100, 50, 100 copies, uh -huh. and then at, at one time we we were very confident, so we we went to a, a printing, uh, and then we asked for help, and then we print one thousand. <laughs> right. And then we. And how'd you do? We, yeah, we we uh. We consign it to bookstores in the city, so mm -hmm. it sold quite well, like around five hundred copies. So at that time, we were happy, but although we didn't make any money, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> exactly, not quite, not quite ready to give up the day job. So, so what was it? Um, what was it that gave you the push to to um to move on from architecture to something else? Uh, so I mean. Uh, I, I love architecture, but I love comic more. So, uh, like right after about two years of working as an architect, because I basically I work kind of like two shift uh, during the day and at night, so my body couldn't take it. Uh, I I got sick quite bad because I was so tired. So uh, at that time, I decided to choose. So I choose to quit my architect job and uh, concentrate on doing comics with my friends basically yeah okay and, and so so how did how did you progress from from sort of doing comics with your your friends to to making it over to the to the states what what happened there oh okay uh so um uh it's kind of uh so one of my senior, uh, she was an architect, uh, my, my senior in, in college. Uh, 
si intern at an American uh, architectural firm called IAM Pay is a very famous uh, architectural firm. Uh, then for, for some reason, she knew about Savannah College of Art and Design, the school. And then for, I don't know how, she could get a, a CD of the of the school, basically like, a, you know, this uh, about the department, basically everything, the information about the school. So when she came back from like the a, like a person Like a prospectus? Yeah, yeah. Just information. Prospectus. Yes. So when she, when she came back from uh, uh, New York, she gave it to me. Then she said, Chris, this, uh, I think you're going to like this school. Then I look at it, I open it, the CD, and I, I, I love it. But uh, of course, I, I didn't have uh, money to, to actually go there. Uh, so, but it gave me motivation to, to try. So... Starting from that time, every year I send a postcard to the school to ask for the new prospectus. So every year I send a new one and I get a new one. Although it's, at that time it's like maybe two or three months and I receive it in, via mail. Uh, but I I always uh, have a new catalog, have a new CD. Uh, just give me a, a motivation to, to, to keep... Uh, mm my dream alive basically so uh in the meantime i i keep doing comic with my friends but at that time we we started to hire some people to help but in the end we couldn't even like pay ourselves salary so because the the money wasn't really uh that big like quite small so uh we decided because my friends also started to need something like kind of bigger income kind of so we decided to kind of split and then i basically i did several many type of jobs uh that is related to drawings like i work in an advertising agency i work as, a, as an storyboard artist i work as an exhibition designer basically the with the goal to save enough money to one day be able to go to to school but uh, of course, it's not enough. So I basically I work for six years. Uh, wow. <laughs> so in in the kind of like around the fifth year, uh, my my best friend told me, uh, actually asked me, uh, do you do you want to go to school again? I said I want to, but I want to go to US to this school. Uh, then he said, why don't you apply for a scholarship? So, uh. I said, uh, I, I, maybe I cannot get it. So, I mean, it's going to be too difficult, a lot of competitions. So, but then he said, just try it. So I tried that uh, Fulbright scholarship from the US government. Then, yeah, I, I was so lucky. I, I, I got it. Wow. I, got, I got the scholarship. <laughs> so I, I could go to that school that I dream of. And basically, uh, because in art school, uh, it's quite expensive, so I, I I also get additional scholarship from the school itself. So basically, uh, around two years, I the, the it could cover the tuition and plus around one year of uh, living in US. So yeah, I, I decided to. Of course, I I I I I thought that. Uh, let's just go and see what happened. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Wow, I can only imagine the uh, the smile, the grin on your face when you found out that you got this scholarship. <laughs> that well, after all yeah, of this time I mean... of dreaming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, it's uh, I couldn't believe it. I mean, it's, yeah, it's I don't know. I mean, I I didn't want to like really had a high hope because. The applicants was at that time about one thousand six hundred people, wow. uh, for any school, not just for that art school, but uh, for uh, for the scholarship basically that year, and they choose twenty five to 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 go. So I was 
number 24. <laughs> <laughs> they told you your number as well. Yeah, That's yeah, wild. yeah. Because uh, it's based on priority. So the, the first 20 will go first. If one of, uh, among those 20, any of them have failed to get a school accepted by a school in US, then the chance will go to the next person. So I, at that time, I still not not hoping that my, my friends will fail to get a school, but I mean, hopefully uh, some of them can get a, a additional scholarship from the university so the budget can go down. Uh, so basically, the, they have a certain budget. Uh, it, it definitely can cover 20, 20 people, but if uh, we can get additional scholarship, then the budget can go to the next person, something like that. So yeah, I was I was lucky. I was lucky. Yeah. Okay. So so how was it going over to uh, to the to Georgia uh, to, to, um, to SCAD? <laughs> uh, I, I was so so excited, but uh, I also uh, a, a, a lot of uh, it's, it's a very new experience. Uh, I was actually surprised that when I landed, then it doesn't look like a city. <laughs> it's, it's very empty. I mean, my imagination about US is like big buildings and stuff, but wow, it's like uh, they're so different. So, but the, the city is a very cool city. I mean, it's very nice, good looking city. Uh, it's a campus city, so a lot of students, everything, the professors, everybody is so, so great there. Yeah. And how many, like, how many people were doing the same sort of courses as you? How many contemporaries did you have? Um, I think, uh, I think they accept uh, new students not only in the fall, but let's say during the winter they can also accept new students. So. Uh, at the time, I, it was fall, two thousand twenty-three. So I think at the time around eight. Uh, wow! And I eight, just eight. Yeah, I, I took a master degree. So so for the scholarship, I cannot redo the bachelor degree. So I have to take the 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 master degree for two years. Like the next one. Yeah. And and there's there's been quite a few sort of people that that we know from comics who sort of gone to to SCAD and, and gone on to a career in, in comics and specifically around G.I. Joe in that time, I think uh, Robert Atkins and also Mike O'Sullivan were there. Yes. Is, were they yes. there at the same time as you? Yeah, uh, actually Robert Robert Atkins was my, uh, like the te teacher, uh, teaching assistant, professor assistant uh -huh. uh, in my first class. Yeah, <laughs> he's, nice. like, he's like my mentor. Okay. And then Mike Sullivan, I, he was graduated before I uh, entered, but then we we met in uh, in Devils too. Yeah. Oh right, you met afterwards. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he was my editor for for a while because of the. After that, I did Dungeons and Dragons and other books with him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and um, was there any other people um, in the set at the same time that you were there who we might know, remember, recognize their names? Uh, I think the one that do also G.I. Joe is Mike Bear. Uh-huh. Uh, Mike Bear and uh, the one that is, I don't know if uh, she, she does uh, G.I. Joe on or related G.I. Joe stuff, uh, but she's quite make it like quite big. Uh, Rebecca Isaac, uh, she's doing a lot of White Storm, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayers. Uh, and then I think before, I didn't, I didn't have a chance to meet him, but he was graduated before I entered. Was uh, Sean Gordon Murphy? Oh right, yeah, 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 big name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I didn't cool. have a chance to 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 meet him, and also there's uh some other like a uh, Brad Walker that I I I got to meet because of uh my professor introduced me to to them, but they what we didn't meet in the during the the study, but. They were graduated before me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so you've you've done your masters at at, uh, at Savannah. Um, what next? What next for you? Do what's? Uh, how do you figure out what to do next? <laughs> oh, so um, basically, at that time, my my life goals was 
to make a comic that can be published in 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 the US basically that's uh that's actually my life goals so when i started uh, study in in scat uh of course i i didn't know i mean uh, uh some of my my classmates actually study bachelor degree in scat as well so they know about the comic basically better than me so so i i try to adapt and so try to learn as much as possible while also try my best to 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 get my stuff published as fast as possible as well kind of uh, so after a year uh, of studying then there's an internship program from scat uh, we have two choices uh, we can go to job internship or teaching internship so i i tried my best to get a job internship uh, some of my friends with the connection from the professors and uh, uh, they can internet dc or marvel uh, because they are american so they i think they are capable to do that because they can help in the editorials uh, but with me I, i i couldn't do that because of my limitation in in english so i try to get a internship that is more towards the drawing so it's not more on on the editorial side so i i look around then i i i try to to internet devs too so i spend about six months or eight months to apply to devs do basically yeah, by email by sending portfolios and everything but no answer of yeah. course maybe maybe thousands of people do the same thing so uh and then i approach them at conventions like i approach mark powers in the conventions i give him uh, my portfolio and i said i want to do internship but also at that time also maybe many people doing that, the same thing and then uh it's just coincidence that i have a a friend that was also graduated from scat uh, a year before me from indonesia not just from indonesia but from the same small city when i was born so that guy actually was my one year above me in my high school i i never met him i i, I didn't know him <laughs> so but my my other Indonesian friend in Scat that before you there's another guy who's from the same city uh this guy this guy this guy he's in Chicago so i i get contact with him and then one day i was when i was about to give up uh, for this internship one day he called me he said chris he's working in he's working as a 3d modeler in a game company called giganto uh Giganto are uh, doing the Def Jam WWE games kind of stuff. Then he he told me, Chris, I'm working in a building, and then on top of my, uh on the second or third floor of my building, there's a comic company. Uh, <laughs> do you want to uh do you want to maybe try to go to there to intern? I said, where where do you work? So he gave me the address. I check, it's the same building. So. <laughs> I told him I've been trying to 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 apply, but I didn't make it. So he said, "Let's just go to Chicago. I'll try to get you in." What do you mean? Like, get you in in front of the door? So I went to Chicago with him. So in the morning, I went to the office, the building, because they have access, right? They cannot go in. So my friend goes inside. He opened the loading door 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 in the back. I go in from the back <laughs> with the portfolio and then we go up to, on the like uh, the the fire stairs kind of uh then he accompanied me until the that floor the devs do floor and until the front really really the front door then he went down and start working so I pushed the bell then Marshall Dylan came out and 
how can you get in <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i did uh my, i have my friends work, working in the studio downstairs oh okay what do you want then i told him that i want to do internship i gave him the portfolio and then i they said he's going to review it then i go home so i stayed for a bit like two or three days but then i didn't get any news i start to call i do email and stuff and then a week after that marshall called me that yeah he, 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 i get accepted hey <laughs> uh, <laughs> so i interned during the winter 2024 eh no no 2004 during the winter right. about two months or i think about two months there in in chicago so i stay again in my friend's house so we go to the office together he worked downstairs i worked on the up- upstairs <laughs> And the <laughs> wow all the way from the same growing up in the same place on the other side of the planet and then you know ending up work living together and uh, working together in the same building that's wild <laughs> so what sort of things did you get up to as as an intern what sort of things um were you doing um i mean at the time of course i wanted to to draw but I also realized that my skill wasn't in the par of the standard uh, at that time. So, uh, especially in in uh, in the studio, there was uh, there were Tim Seeley, which is very good and very fast, and Mike Norton, mm-hmm. who's also drawing very good. So every day I look at them drawing like, oh my god, how can I draw like this? So, uh, so I mostly help on scanning uh fedex and uh, other stuff lah. basically the intern stuff uh uh-huh. and from the, from time to time actually they uh like marshall josh or mark uh still reviewing my portfolio or give me a chance to do some uh, cover sketches composition and stuff uh just to basically keep me busy uh mm-hmm. but i also realized that uh at that time my skill wasn't that that good yet so um yeah but uh yeah later on in the end there's uh i got a job before I'm, i was i finished my intern yeah. oh before you finished so so yeah. you, you every every self do you know like hey do you wanna do you wanna let me draw something and <laughs> and was that oh, okay. was that was that a rashikage showdown that was your the job that you got given or was this something else Oh okay actually my my uh not really a um uh, kind of like a big like a, a the break, big break uh so so one day it it was friday uh so my friend was actually uh kind of like in the last stage of releasing the game so he's doing overtime a uh, very and go home very late so I have to, I'm I'm waiting for him basically uh every day so and that friday uh around one o'clock uh marshall came uh to my desk and then he told me hey uh hasbro want us to draw, uh, to design a new toys uh but it's different it's more like a a fusion uh it's not really uh the usual american stuff Do you want to try? Then I said yes. <laughs> of course, I have nothing to do. Uh, yes, I try. He, he said, uh, "I will collect it around three or four o'clock." Uh, the drawings. Then he said, "Okay, what do you want me to draw?" So at that time, it was Snake Eyes, Duke, and I think Heavy Duty or something. Uh, so I just did uh, some kind of like sketches, kind of like. Proportion, but I also try to make it uh, a bit more Asian kind of like stylized because uh, because of my drawing influence. Uh, then around three or four o'clock, Marshall collect everything, and then I think he scan it and he send it somewhere. So uh, I didn't know that at that time uh, uh, Mike and Tim also did some drawings as well. Uh, Okay. And then, uh, around five o'clock, everybody left the office except Josh, still still in his uh, office, and me. 
like in the corner because I'm still waiting for the for my friends. So uh, around I think around six o'clock, just call me. Uh, please come to to the to my office. Then I went inside, and he said, "Hasbro like your drawings. So starting from Monday, you you draw this, and it's Sigma Six. So that's I did. <laughs> that's actually what uh, the kind of like the first official kind of like. Not really a job because I'm still an intern, but uh, something a project that really really uh actually coming out. So that's that's the the first one. So it was yeah. it was lit. Would they, did they like literally just give you a name and and say, can you redesign this character and create a new look for this character? Is that uh, kind of that, but they also I think I think at the time they also give us some kind of like reference. Uh, kind of like I I don't really remember exactly, but I think they they also set, give up some reference of how they want it to look kind of look like. So, I mean, the maybe the kind of bulkiness, the like the a bit more uh, okay AG type of uh proportion kind of things. Uh, yeah. So it's like but, reference for sort of this type of shape the type of yeah. style that they're more looking. more like a toy shape at that time i think uh -huh. yeah so i right. i make it into more like a illustration kind of uh style yeah <laughs> wow so so they so like working late on a friday afternoon you you begin given a chance to sort of do some designing, and then a couple of hours later, you said, "Yep, yeah, you've got a job designing GI Joe characters." Is that yeah. is that's right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a I I will never forget that that moment because like I I was so happy, eh? I was so happy. So, uh, I think I think even during the those weekend, I I I practice to draw. <laughs> GI Joe more uh, because of that, yeah. So, so, so your job for a bit was was working sort of directly for Hasbro, was it? Doing the uh, Sigma Six designs was initially. Um. So in the end, I actually I'm doing turnaround uh, for for the toys, and then started to do the last. Uh, I think the first five of the Sigma Six, the packaging drawing was still in the photograph of the toys, but then, uh -huh, okay, yeah, the first Duke, uh, Heavy Duty, Snake Eyes, uh, Spirit. I think, uh, I think the the first five, I, but then after that, they wanted to have a, the similar like kind of cartoony stuff. Then I, I started to to work on that. So I actually work, uh. For Devils too. Uh yeah, not not directly to Hasbro, but through Devils too. Yeah. But don't, all right. Yeah, I was just yeah. uh, bringing up a um, heavy duty package uh, there on the screen. So uh, that's like that's how some of the figures initially <laughs> looked. With uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if that was he quite an early one. Um, yes, yes, that's the early one. Heavy duty, yes. That's still uh, like a kind of like photograph type of thing. Like the here's like the list of uh, all of the the Joes uh, and Cobras mm. from from Sigma Six. Is there a particular one that might be a good example to to talk about? Like you've got Z is it Zartan you've got behind you? Yeah, I think Zartan is quite interesting because I love the characters, and then also so later on um, the. I did mostly the packaging illustrations uh, because usually uh. they send us the photograph of the toys, the the masters of the toys, like the right, yeah, yeah, the master. Uh, uh, then I started to to draw based on that, and then colored, mm -hmm. and then they they put it on the on the packaging, something like that. Okay. So with um with this one here, for example, of Zartan, where where there is the illustration of him down in the in the bottom of the the box, would that yes. be you or 
that would be the type of thing that you do. Uh, that, that's what, what I did that. I I reference the toys, but also I reference the, Uh -huh. the, the animation. So I have to reference Uh -huh. uh, because I don't really, I cannot really follow exactly like the toys, but I have to like make it because at that time the animation is also airing on TV. So I need to make it, uh, people can relate from the animation to the toys kind of uh, Yeah. closer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, so And there all was these a lot of are full body actually. They they crop it. Oh right, and then they've cropped it down to to fit Yeah. it onto the yeah, yeah. in the in the way that they've decided decided to design the package. Uh, Yes. in the end so you, you're like i've done this great big picture and then you see the actual package is like okay they've only used a tiny bit of it <laughs> yes uh, so so later on it was it was more the the sort of interpreting the the designs you know looking at the reference to 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 create the the packaging um but but just to just to sort of make sure that i'm understanding right in the in the it was in the earlier stages where you actually doing some of the character design yourself so uh and if so you know how about how many characters um from the line do you think you um you came up with uh i think probably uh the, only the earliest around maybe uh five or six the earliest earliest okay. and then Uh, some of them only part of it, like the weapons sometimes. So some of the props. So uh, because after that, um, basically some of the figures are variations, right? So like variation of Snake Eyes, variations of Cobra Commander, variation of uh, Storm Shadow. So uh, they the design are actually from the from Hasbro, and then I. maybe help a bit on the, on the detailing the weapons or every or, or props and then the packaging yeah uh -huh. cool so so that's interesting i i imagined in my mind how everything happened that that was almost the last thing <laughs> that that happened but it's actually the first the first thing that came about um so so how did how did working then on the um how did working on some actual comics um fit into that um sequence of events what at what point um, did did devils do you actually say you know give you the chance to, to to draw some some comics okay so i uh i think uh the last the last day of my internship uh mike sullivan uh talked to me that he mentioned about arashikagi showdown so this this book was supposed to pub supposed to go to print around uh in three weeks something or two or three weeks from that time uh but the book was already uh started the pub the 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 production like a year ago kind of things i mean i love the drawings i mean i love Uh, Tony Tama is drawing a lot. I I was looking at it like, what wow, is drawing so good? So, but uh, probably at that time the pace was wasn't fast enough for for the publication date. Mm -hmm. So Mike offered me, uh, actually asked me, can, can you draw similar like this? <laughs> Then I said I'll try it. <laughs> I tried. So I tried, and that last day of internship, I tried to draw. I tried to draw. Uh, as close as possible as possible, um, mm -hmm. but then uh, then I, I I finished the internship and then like several days after that, uh, Mike called me. Okay, can you finish the book in two weeks? <laughs> yeah, that's true. So uh, I have around there's a, there's a lot of pages. I, I have I have to finish one hundred twenty. four pages in two weeks i What's... mean it's impossible at that time i mean if but but at that time i was i ha i didn't have anything published yet so i was really really eager to do it so i 
and at that time the school already started so i gather some of my friends uh in school because ev everybody's like comic artists there so i try oh you good in this you good in this you good in this i said this i have this project but can you help me in these two weeks so then i also talk to my professors uh I told them that uh, in some of the classes, probably in the next two weeks, I don't have any progress yet in my assignments. But I promise I'm going to catch up later on because I have this book that I need to be done in two weeks. Uh, and then because I think in, 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 in SCAD, the professor always helps us to get a job, basically. Try to get a job. Mm -hmm. So this is a job. So... Uh, they said, okay, as long as you do it uh, later on, you catch up. Then I, I I did it. I finished it in two weeks. Everything. Wow. Because there's like, uh, yeah, in the front of the book, it says Chris, yeah, Chris Lai in, where are we? In in the oh, big yeah. letters. You're, you're the main credited artist. And then with, uh, with Tony Tamai, which is the person that, that you said first yeah. and so so they tony to had been working on it the book as guess the lead artist initially did they did they produce how many pages have they produced and and did did you with those pages then left as they were and you just tried to match the style or did you go back and draw no, over no, the no. top I, or i think tony did uh i think if you see it you really really look closer uh I think he did 24 pages, the first 24 pages. Okay. Then I, I finished okay. the rest. Yeah, because given all did, of yeah. the given all of the artists involved, it, it's very um yeah, it's a very smooth transition. There isn't like a sort of a, a moment where you jump out and say, uh, you know, this is definitely different lots of different artists. So Tony Tomai, Anthony Spey, Ramanda Kamaga, and Dove yeah. McHarg. So these are all like people that you've you've yeah. asked to come help you out yeah and that anthony anthony is my roommate uh <laughs> yeah it's my 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 schoolmate and my roommate uh R ramanda is uh my fellow indonesian uh who's also studying a bachelor degree in in comic in scat too he's very good inker uh and he has the flair of japanese kind of style so he really really helps uh, and fit with the project and then dove uh my my classmate as well and now dove is the head of department uh in sequential art in sket now cool. <laughs> and there was there was like a couple of pages like uh i think this this one here i don't know if you can uh, this this one yes. i yes. looked at that and i thought that that looks a little bit like um josh blaylock maybe even drew this page oh uh, yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. uh that's yeah, that's but, amazing and yeah i mean and but the deadline was yeah said like that so i we we couldn't do anything we, ju we just uh yeah we just tried our best but uh i thought it's a it's a big chance for us for all of us because at that time we all of us are like students so we 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 try to finish it, yeah, yeah. And and as a it's, a it's like a first big job job as well because you know normally you hear about people starting out and saying, oh, when I was starting out, I was so slow. I was doing like a page a week, you know. Uh, and and also not only are you doing it so so fast, but it's you're saying that you're also trying to you know match your style as well. So it's not not maybe your natural style that you're drawing in yeah i actually i when i started i can try to mimic i, I used to try to mimic different styles like uh -huh. i like this uh artist and i try to to emulate the style i like this artist i try to emulate the style so i kind of like has a like an experience to do that and also this is more like a japanese kind of things uh style that I'm more close to, so I I dare to take the project. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. 
<laughs> so so de- then did um did this project it led on to the the next thing was the sigma 6 adaptation the six six issue actually i've got i've got the transformers cover there art of war which uh um, made its way onto the Om- omnibus <laughs> yes yes uh, this one yes. and then stigma sex yes there it is <laughs> i think because uh i've been uh when they started this project i've been drawing for the toys for a while so i kind of like mm-hmm. uh used to the style and that's why i think they give the project to me and i think because i also can finish this 120 pages in two weeks so <laughs> <laughs> Just, okay give, maybe give him uh, another project so uh yeah i think it's the project really really fits uh with my my style so i really like the sigma six style it's, it's it's kind of like more like an eastern type of uh, last art style you know so mm-hmm. I, I love it i love the, the project yeah yes it's a, and it's a different sort of book because it's it's so much in that universe and for a particular issue it's almost like a uh, a solo book focusing on a particular character in the in the different issues like uh, spirit or storm shadow or tunnel rats or scarlet uh, or heavy duty yeah. <laughs> you know that um uh, it, it's 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 folk, you know, a bit more focused uh, uh, on a particular, uh, you know, one almost like a one shot focusing on on that particular character's story for for that particular issue. Yes, yes. Um, so, so I guess I was going to say um, it's it's all traditional uh, pencils uh, and then uh, and then computer colors, but back in two thousand and or whenever it was i guess everyone was penciling <laughs> traditionally yeah, yeah, yeah. um yes. in in pencils um and you've held on to all of your uh original uh all of your let, we'll talk about that in a second all of your original art so you've you've yeah. still got it all yeah i still have everything all the pages of for of this sigma 6 and all everything all the toys illustrations all the packaging everything yeah that's wild is that is that because is that because you you know you want you you know it's something that is important to you and you want to hold on to it or or is it is it just that you've not ever really sort of tried to 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 sell it um a, 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 a bit of both but uh at at that time i I I love it so much, <laughs> uh, but uh, I mean later on I kind of like it's okay if uh, maybe I'm one day I'm gonna mm-hmm. sell it. Let's say I mean some of the pages, but at that time I I I, I was really really love it. Uh, so and I didn't yeah I didn't like kind of like have a need to sell the pages at that time. So I still. Just to still keep it here. Yes. And and you um you were just showing me before we started started recording some of the some of the things uh some of the the originals that you've you've got. I think you sh- you showed me that you had like roughs of of some of the pen of the pages. Um, are you able to to share that and maybe talk about uh that that process? Yeah. So uh, so basically, I still have is. It- I still have the script, so this is the the script oh, wow. that I, I yeah I'm working on. I print it out, and then from here, I I did some thumbnails. Um, uh, this is like the opening page, and then in this. So, mm. for all the pages, I, I I did the the sketches. Right. So you're sort of laying it out in um in a, in a fairly detailed way. Um, is that on a page of like a uh, A4 like letter page or yeah, maybe a bit it's bigger? It's an A4, yeah. Uh, I I divide it uh-huh. into two, so it's kind of like A5. And I scan this and I send it to 
to at the time to Mike and Mark, yeah, to to for them to review, and then after they approve, then I start uh, lay out this into the original uh, eleven by seventeen pages. No, no. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, no, approach. Yeah. <laughs> Got the dog caressing you. Yeah, I still, I still have everything. All the issues. This is issue four, I think. Just this is issue. I think issue five. This is issue three. So I still have everything. Wow. Uh, this, is, this is issue number two. Uh huh. I can see Spirit so, and Zartan. Yeah. 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 I still have everything complete. Because uh, I, uh, after I came back from US at that time, I teach for three years in an art school. So I use uh -huh. this uh, materials too as a uh, teaching materials to show the students how to actually uh, the steps of drawing comics. Right, right. So it's useful, right. yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's sort of, uh, if you can reuse something like that, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Cool. So um, the the other big um, the other big uh, sort of GI Joe piece that that I know uh, yeah you're sort of more famous for is the the cover to issue uh, twenty five that enormous um, uh, cover that uh, that features basically all of the GI Joes uh, ever created almost yeah. uh, that's from America's Elite twenty five. Uh, which came out May 2007. It's got 236 characters, not in counting animals and pets. Um, and um, it was, until recently, the Guinness World Record winner for the most individual characters on a comic book cover. Oh, so that's, really? Uh, did you? Yeah, I was wondering if you actually knew knew this. That if anyone had ever uh, told you, I, I didn't. I didn't know. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's amazing. Now you know, and oh. knowing is half the battle. So, so um, uh, just in the last few months, uh, GI Joe issue three hundred came out, illustrated by artist Jamie Sullivan, which again was a a double cover with lots and lots of G.I. Joe characters on it. And that is now the Guinness uh, world record holder for the most characters. Uh, but uh, between uh, 2007 and then, basically, um, this is uh, this is the uh, the Guinness world record holder for the most uh, characters on a cover. Oh, uh, I didn't know. I should put it in my resume. <laughs> yeah, you definitely should. You should. <laughs> yeah, now you now you can put on your yeah on, on your CV Guinness Guinness World Record ho well holder at one point anyway. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, yeah, yeah it, I. Do, can you tell me a little bit about um, creating this this uh, this cover? How you went about it? Yeah. So. Um, I remember I, I created this, uh, after I came back to Indonesia. So okay. I graduated in 2005 and then I had a one year of a uh, job opportunity, like working opportunity for one year in the U S. So at that time I, I stay in Savannah with, with my, my roommate, Anthony, and then we worked together on comics I think until August uh, 2006. Then uh, I went back to Indonesia and Anthony went back to Philadelphia. So so we kind of like, uh, he's actually waiting for me until I have to go from US. So uh, after that, I uh, went back to Jakarta and then uh, they were still gave me these assignments. So I was so excited because I, I love drawing very detailed stuff. Uh, in my other comic books, I draw very detailed. Like I did D&D books that's very, very detailed as well. 
So I, when they give me the assignments, I actually draw it in a huge paper, like a, I think four times yeah, of uh, regular papers, like around. Yeah, I I saw I saw in a diff in another interview you said it was twenty inches by twenty eight inches, so uh, mm. huge. Yeah, it's huge. So it it's very difficult to. Uh, so I I think I spent ar around two weeks to to do it. Uh, kind of yeah, like basically placing uh and then sketching and then inking, and then the problem came when I have to scan it. So my <laughs> My scanner is A3, so I have to like stitching six, I think six scans together to right. to match, and then I, I I could I could send the the drawings to to they was to to be colored. So yeah, it's a un, unforgettable uh, artwork. So I still I still have it in my in my office. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I actually frame it. <laughs> is it on? It's in it's on a frame, is it on your on your wall? It's a, it, it's on the frame, uh, and I put it in my oh. studio until, until COVID. So when the COVID, uh, uh, when the COVID came, uh, we had to go. To, we had to work from home, so the office was kind of like abandoned for two years, two and a half years. So that's why early this year we started to came to go back to office and then we mm -hmm. try to clean up some stuff and that's why uh some of the drawings are they keep it in a storage or something so but it's still there i mean i i know it's still there it's just uh we haven't put it up again but uh yeah this is like one of the uh and highlights of my drawing career <laughs> <laughs> excellent and how did you how did you decide which uh, which characters to to use and 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 then also go about figuring out how to fit them all all in? Oh, uh, I think at that time, uh, the instructions from the editorial teams was to put the current team on the this front. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Around this this front area, and then yeah. Uh, the not not so i mean like then the next the next like uh the next will be here on, on the back uh on the back cover mm -hmm. and then the rest of the character should go up based on the kind of uh popularity kind of things so uh -huh. the less popular character probably will be put more on the back <laughs> back at the top yeah <laughs> yeah and did you like start off with with um like stick figures almost like to figure out um where everyone's going and then sort uh, of just go from there uh yeah not really stick figure but i i just draw like a proportion like a mm. if let's say duke i make it a bit uh bigger and then if it's a girl, I make it a bit uh, smaller. So I try to arrange that uh, uh, with the kind of like a blocky kind of blocks, body blocks, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then go up from there, like, you know, like uh, between the head, two heads, I'm going to put another character like that, something like that. So make sure everybody, uh, at least the, the torso can be seen. You know, uh, a bit so the people will uh, will recognize the character basically, not just the head, but there's a bit of the torso as yeah. well. Yeah. Yes. Makes sense. That's wild. And your your architecture background coming into play here as well with a nice uh, rendered background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 true. It takes a while to 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 do that. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. So, um, so I guess I guess was that the that was the probably the last bit of your actually no well I was gonna say that's the last bit of your your GI Joe work but then then obviously there's the 25th anniversary uh, um, file cards yeah. as, as well that you were just telling us about. 
yes i i did uh this uh packaging uh mm-hmm. basically can redraw the old packaging and make it looks like an old one but it's actually new so i did all the pencils i uh pencil line up pencils and then uh a a, a, co- a digital color is uh paint it looks like a gouache painting so mm-hmm. i did uh many of them uh and then actually from time to time i was still working on some of the some of the illustrations uh in the cu- coming years but mostly on the ideas so it's not really uh I'm not really following if the design is actually out or not. So, uh, yeah, and and we work on transformers in the end. So until now, we help on the transformers packaging until now. So okay, right up until on... today. Yes, yes, huh? yes. My my team, my team is uh in the caravan studio. We 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 help on the uh transformers packaging. Yeah. Uh, and and so you're saying that you you were doing some design um, design work for GI Joe as as well in between what at like 2007. Uh, so uh, from time to time, uh, I did different sketches, ideas of uh, new characters, but uh, okay. usually with 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 Hasbro, they sometimes they have an idea for a new line of toys. And mm-hmm. then uh, they asked maybe several different artists to draw, uh, come up with ideas. But in the end, uh, it will go to them internally to decide and then to improve mm-hmm. from there. So uh, most of my works is only until the sketches, ideas, ideas sketches. Right. Uh, and then... I'm not really sure that it's it's actually making uh in into a, a toys, but I think at that time we work a bit. I think on the pursuit of Cobra. I think uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. if I if I not mistaken, I think. But I I don't really exactly remember uh how which character and uh which one. Yeah. Okay. Do you have some of your sketches there or or not? Uh, I I can show some of the the Sigma Six, but for the that the one that the the the, the work after that, I I don't I don't really have it here. I think, but this is some of the sketches. Oh, heavy TT. So this is like my sketches that I send. For different poses, mm-hmm. then they're gonna choose mm-hmm. which one that they they want to go to, uh, like final. This is good. Uh, this one is a robot. Bats? Yeah, the bats. Uh, storm shadow. Tunnel red. Tunnel red. Yeah, different. So I did a lot of many of these sketches, and then the one that they like this is Artan. Yeah. Uh-huh. This is the one that they like. They uh asked me to like continue and finishing up. So just draw. Just draw. Yeah. Oh, some background as well. Some of the actually the toys packaging, some ideas, a field, some like a temple kind of. Yeah. Cool. So, so then I guess. Uh, is you know after after you're done with GI Joe stuff, you're you're continuing to create uh, a bunch of other comics work. You've uh, I was looking at the credits. There's quite a lot of of things that you worked on. A lot of it for for Devil's Due, but also some some other um, uh, companies like uh, Archie. Am I remembering that correctly? 
yes uh i, I work for actually i i got a job from archie comics uh it's from devil's do <laughs> because of the right. internship as well so yeah it's it's another funny story because, um at the time uh when devil's do was uh when i was there so devil's do devil's do office are, are not really big so when they have meeting and I'm the only intern, so I'm kind of like the one who kind of like guarding the office kind of things. So when somebody came in, came for whatever reason, let's say uh, give, I received the pay something like that. So uh, at that time, Andrew P. Poi, the inker of GI Joe, uh, came to deliver some ink pages. So uh, after. Then he asked, "Where's everybody?" I said, "Everybody in the in the meeting room." So then we talk. Then he asked me what I'm I'm doing. I'm an intern. So what are you drawing? Hey, I draw. I'm a penciler. I said. So then he asked me, "Do you want to do you want to try out for Archie Comics?" So <laughs> uh, I said, "Yes." Okay. Uh, so I'll pay Josie and the more manga manga style kind of things then he said i'm gonna ink it which is he inks very good he, he inks amazingly good so i'm gonna ink it uh and i'm gonna submit it to to to, to the editorial team in archie comics yeah uh, and we if if it's accepted then we get we both get a job said so i said okay right. so i yeah i uh i did uh two sample pages uh, of of just in the pussycats in in manga style, mm -hmm. and then I give it to him when he come again to the office, and then after I finish my internship, he called me and we get a job. So we work together for a while, like about nice. five pages a month for several maybe a year or something for Archie Comics. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a I think. Uh, my internship really opens a lot of doors for me. Very good. Yeah. So, so, um, yeah, you, you sort of across, you know, once you'd broken in, it looks like you, you worked on quite a, a few comics, but, um, but since then, you know, your career's taken a, a bit of a, a, a change. And now obviously, uh, you're, you're heading up Caravan Studios and that, you know, sounds like you're doing a lot of, uh, a lot of big work with a with a big team of people. So, um, yeah, do you want to tell tell us about how your your career then sort of shifted from from comics to to kind of where you are to today? Okay. Uh. So, when I came back, I I still had I still had many contract uh, comics and also jobs from US. So, I started to need help, extra help. Uh, which is I actually also help has help in in the US with by, with my friends but here in Indonesia it's easier for me to work with team that is also uh I think hopefully we can can work together in one place so we can uh basically control the quality and the schedule and everything for, uh, easier so uh, I started caravan studio with four other artists uh, mostly uh line artists and then Along the way, uh, we started to get more people coming in that is the more based on a painting, like digital painting kind of illustrator, illustrator. So we started to get a job doing cut illustrations for games. And then uh, at that time, I, I really wanted to be able to design something for movies. Uh, especially because of Star Wars. So when the Star Wars mm -hmm. uh, 1, 2, 3 came out, I was looking at it like, oh my God, the art book's so great. I mean, the, all the designs. So I really wanted to do that, but uh, I I knew that it's going to be very, very hard to, to get in the, into the industry, especially I'm in Jakarta and the industry is in Hollywood. So... Uh, I, I just keep it in mind 
and keep doing the other stuff like the gaming and comic stuff. And then one day in 2005, there's a movie producers in Indonesia. Uh, asked to meet me. Uh, basically, we knew each other briefly, but then he he called me to meet him. Then he told me that I I knew you can do concept art for movies. I'm gonna give you a chance. Uh, this is a uh, the first Indonesian HBO series. Uh, direct directed by uh, the one of the famous most famous Indonesian director. So can you do it? But it's uh, but the pre production time is only a month for everything, for all the designs and everything. Then I said yes. So I mean, he 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 trusted me. To, he trusted me to to basically to try. So he confid he's confident with with us. So we we try to deliver our our best. So the movie I think from the look the movie is looks good. The series is called Half Words in HBO Asia. It looks good. So from there, uh, I started to uh, get offered to design local movies, but the one that is uh, more like a big, big, big scale, like a period time of movies and uh, superhero movies. So from uh, working on those, I started to know. Uh, crews, film crews that are uh, from Australia, from Thailand, from other countries. So basically, we work on this movie called Buffalo Boys. Uh, the crew was from Australia. Uh, the fighting is from uh, Thailand. The fighting crews and the other, uh, the wardrobe is also from Thailand. So it's a mix of, of uh, different. Uh, uh, some of them from Singapore. So, uh, we did really, really, in, we we really enjoy working on that project, and we did a lot of good like drawings, design, costumes, everything. So, one day, uh, one of the art director of uh, Marco Polo on Netflix came to the to the office and looked at the drawing, and about six months after that, he he, he called me to join. Uh, like an international production movie in 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 Johor, is like a Hollywood uh, and China productions, and then from there I met a uh, a senior production designer in US, and then he brought me to, uh, he just finished working on Hellboy at that time, when we met, then he told me, uh, if I knew you before I will bring you to Hellboy, <laughs> so I didn't, we were so. Oh my God, Hellboy! So, but he said, "Don't worry, um, don't worry, don't worry. There'll be a project after this." So after that, he brought us to work on the Old Guard uh, for for Netflix. So it's also from comic books, which I was so excited to. And then uh, he brought us to Cinderella, uh, the new Cinderella, the musical ones, and then from Cinderella. Uh, there's some kind of a hiatus for a bit, and I work on a Netflix movie uh, with Dev Patel. It's, the movie is not out yet; it's gonna be out hopefully end of the year or next year. Uh, then I was like, some of my friends asked me, "What, what, what do you want? Like, what's your dream project?" Then I told them, uh, "I want to work on superhero movies." But uh, of course, working for Marvel is kind of like impossible because they have internal team to work. But who knows? Maybe for DC or something. Then on the twenty third of December at that time, I think two thousand twenty, two thousand twenty, I guess, I got an email to uh, from the production designer to the offer to work on Sazam. So. <laughs> I I couldn't sleep again that night, so <laughs> I think I was like, uh, I don't know, like the one that the the job that I'm doing right now is I couldn't really imagine it back then, you know. At that time, I just wanted to draw to draw comics, but now like 
gradually I I can work on something bigger and bigger and bigger, which which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, setting the goals and then getting there and then like figuring out what what next? What can I do that's bigger and better? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Wild. Yeah. It's it's yeah. it's it's amazing. It's amazing. Like I I I'm feel so 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 blessed to be able to to do this as my job. Yeah. So even though I thought I wouldn't have to stay late and late at night i mean let's say oh maybe later on if uh i'm not gonna i can sleep earlier and stuff no i mean i still work until very late until now but I, i'm still very happy like every day because i mean uh i look at projects each project has their own challenge challenge and excitement so I mean, it is is amazing. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> what a great note to to end to end things on. Um, so uh, yeah, if people want to find out more, uh, I'll put all of the information in the in the links when I post this. But uh, I guess Caravan Studio, uh, you're on Twitter or X. You're on Instagram. You've got your website, caravanstudio.com. So, um, is there anything yet you wanted to to mention or uh, that that we've not yet talked about? Mm. And I don't know. No, maybe I think that's that's <laughs> really much. Yeah. And. Yeah, I guess uh, when maybe one th thought to end it on when you're looking back at the work that you produced almost 20 years now, I guess, sort of um, from those devil's due years, uh, what sort of emotion do you do you feel looking back at your your early work? Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, I mean, I I feel that I I should I should do better, you know. <laughs> but uh, at that time, I it, it was uh, what I could do best. But uh, of course, people are like kind of improving. So looking at your old work, uh, I feel like sometimes I I can only want to re redo it, kind of things. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean they. I think it's part of the process. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, brilliant. Thank you. I guess I'll, I'll wrap up and I'll just say thank you so much for for taking the time to to talk with me to, today. And I'm sure that everyone who listens to this and watches this uh, will find it all, all fascinating. Your sort of the, the trajectory of your your career and the sort of uh, work that that you've you know been involved in over the over the years. It was uh, yeah great to spend some uh, some time with you. Yeah, and thanks, man. Thank you. And, and if anyone is new to Talking Joe, um, we've got, obviously got the uh, YouTube channel, um, so like and subscribe. <laughs> but also our website, talkingjoe.co.uk, is the website. You can find all of the links to the places where we are on Twitter. I'm still calling it Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. <laughs> and uh and all of the podcast channels so that is where you can find us um and with all of that i'll just say thank you so much chris and uh catch you next time because nobody beats talking joe an international podcast <laughs> laters thank you thank you bye thank you so much mark <laughs> <laughs>